in school you learn that certain colors do not agree when they come together you know but i've come i've come to realize after i came out of school that that is a total lie you know because certain colors rather attract other colors and instead of repelling each other they harmonize depending on the other colors that you put together you know I trained at the College of Art at the University of Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Kumasi. And I trained as a painter. And then um, I also um, graduated with a master's degree in African art and comparative literature. Um, the emphasis on that was to look at the uh, social aspects of the Gans, the ethnic group which I come from, and their way of life, as well as uh, look at the uh, ethnic groups in Africa and their ways of doing art and uh, other things that uh, identify them as a people. Yeah, it's an interesting um, phenomenon because uh, when I was in the secondary school, I was almost good in all the subjects except music <laughs> and then uh, Latin, which was also uh, optional, but at a certain level you uh, study it just to pass before you can choose your subjects. But uh, halfway through the course, I happened to realize that I could draw and paint very well during the art classes. And my art teacher told me that, look, if you do very well, you, you could pursue up, it up to a very high uh, level. And I was very good at ceramics, you know, clay, working with clay, and then I was fascinated because we had a kiln in the uh, art class, and after the works had been fired and glazed, you know, they fascinated me. So it also encouraged me to, to um, work in the arts, to paint, and to <coughs> encourage myself. But my father, uh, who was an Greek economist, thought I should pursue the uh, economics, you know, in the university, and it became a problem. But eventually, I bypassed him and applied to go and <laughs> do art in the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, and I was accepted. So I ended up uh, doing uh, art, and I graduated as a painter. Yeah. It's a, a very tricky question to ask. Uh, I wouldn't say it's difficult, but it's a very tricky question. Well, art to me is uh, my way of life. You know, um, when I get up and I'm happy that I'm alive again, you know, the thoughts that come into my mind can stay with me throughout the whole day. And when I go out, you know, to town and meet people, maybe in the marketplace, in the town center, or the beach or anywhere, everything registers. And if I can recollect what I've seen throughout the day, or experiences that I've gone through in life, and I end up either depicting them maybe on canvas or expressing through a dialogue, I term it as art. I simplify it by saying that our way of 
talking our way of um, doing things um, can be summed up by me as art. Most artists do not like to describe how their works are, are like because they think the work should speak for themselves. But um, I see my art as an inner expression of, of um, what I'm thinking and what, what I like. You know, if I have a, a like, a liking for maybe jazz music, I take an aspect of the jazz music I can remember, maybe a trumpeter or a saxophonist or a violinist playing, you know, and I try to paint that scene or the person with the feeling, you know. So when I look at these things, they translate on the canvas in a way that I, I, I can express. And by doing so, I use a lot of colors. I draw the people with their, their, their expressions in a way I feel comfortable with. And these are the aspects of um, uh, my work that describes what, what actually I do, you know. The, the, the feeling I put into my work, the colors and also the uh, uh, intensity of what the people are doing. Because I use a lot of uh, figures in my work as well as a lot of color. And then uh, I let myself go in the, in the uh, expressionistic uh, way. Yeah. <laughs> so far as I'm alive, I keep myself motivated. I had a, for that, life is interesting. It's, uh, uh, if we look at it in a more philosophical way, it's more like. Uh, uh, life is what you make it, you know. So if you want to be happy, you can create a situation where you can be happy. And each and every time I try to tell myself that, look, uh, this is what I want to paint. And sometimes if I don't have the uh, interest or the motivation to paint, I, I, I relax, maybe look through magazines, read novels, watch documentaries, and these things create images in my mind which motivates me. Or sometimes I can all of a sudden, uh, during a sleep, not dream as such, but wake up remembering something that I promised myself that I will paint. So maybe by the end of the week, what I have been thinking about is what will motivate me to paint. Or sometimes somebody might come and say, Look, um, we are looking for a particular type of painting. The person might describe it to me, and using my imagination, I can create um, an atmosphere of what the person wants. And sometimes when they come and see it, they are overwhelmed because they never thought I could even do it better than their expectation. So in a way, it, it helps to... Uh, create motivation for me, you know, in terms of different influences, people who come to me and uh, what I also think about during the day or in the coming weeks or months or, or years or everyday experiences that I go through. Yeah. Even the way the women are carrying things on their head and moving with the babies at their back, the way they are Climbing, climbing the uh, public transport, and the way people dash across the road, and the way they are pulling heavy loads of carts and things across. It's, it's all like um, what we now call action painting, you know, or uh, uh, um, I, I, I've, I've forgotten the uh, the, way, the the term you give now um, installations you know living installations it's happening in a moment and it's gone 
you go around like uh, Kanikwe, mm -hmm. you find the uh, artisans cutting wood and painting, and then the next moment you come, what they were doing is finished. It's in the grave. It's getting it's rotten. getting rotten. It's, it's, it's used. It's used up. You know. People have cried and ate yeah. and drank. And and, and then the nobody day. cares about whether the artist used blue or red on it. It's like he was giving a decent barrier. She was giving a decent barrier, and it's gone. Mm -hmm. You s you go to the beach. You see the fisher folks pulling the net with the fish coming in the boats, rocking on the waves, so, and so it's and. It's yes, performance. it's performance art. Installation installation yes, performance and is and you, the artist, like like the camera, picks it up, puts it in your in your in your brain, and then transfers it on the canvas, and it's still, it's captured for the moment in history. So that's how I'm influenced by my surroundings. You know, you see everyday happenings. And you record it on the canvas. I don't deliberately um, try to paint in the abstract vein. But sometimes, you know, at a certain stage in the painting, the painting is so appealing that you don't care whether the subject matter or what you've painted is clear to the eye, you know, like uh, whether the form of a person really depicts the human being. But maybe the, the, the color of the person may be a silhouette of a figure, but at the same time it's interesting. So I, I sometimes don't... Uh, intentionally go out to, to paint abstracts, you know. It just evolves depending on my mood and then maybe the subject matter in which I'm, I'm working. So if I decide that uh, maybe I'm painting a jazz uh, subject matter and I realize that the faces of uh, the musicians should not be uh, so realistic. I can paint them in such a way that the colors will represent the, the faces and it's an abstracted form of a figure. You know? So it's not uh, really a deliberate effort to create abstract uh, paintings, but you know, you get to a certain phase or stage in the painting where you think the painting is finished, you know, and somebody else can come and look at the painting and say, well, this painting is an abstract. And to you, it's not an abstract. It's a certain stage in your painting that you've, you've got into that you feel uh, should be left as it is. It's, it's like I can easily get bored with one style, you know. So I always set myself standards. If, for instance, I paint a painting today and friends or my family come to see it and say, oh, this is beautiful. After a while, I grow out of it and I, I want to do something more interesting or more uh, powerful, you know, than what I've painted, you know. And sometimes they will come and say, oh, last time what you did was nicer. And I feel that I have not succeeded. So it keeps uh, forcing me to do something greater than what I've done. And it also depends on the subject matter. If, for instance, um, I love a particular subject that I'm doing, I put in all my effort. And halfway through the uh, painting, if there's a difficulty, I put it aside and, you know, sometimes dream about it, sometimes look at it for a long time. And some of the difficulties or, or problems associated with what I'm painting find solutions by themselves. And then I continue from there. So it's, um, it's by instinct that the styles and different subject matters come as I paint along. If I compare some of the works that I did uh, about maybe 10 years back, 
you could see a little bit of uh, uh, faces, you know, in terms of uh, how I, I use color. When you say faces, you mean you mean stages. Yes, I mean stages. I mean stages in in in, in my uh, life as a painter. The the, the 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 sort of subject matter that was interesting some maybe five or ten years back, it's uh, different now. You know. Uh, Maybe 15 years back, it was traditional market scenes, uh, festivals, etc. Now I'm more into contemporary uh, activities like jazz music, like horse riding polo, like um, um, rich society, uh, rich society, the bourgeoisie, cards players, uh, chess players, etc. You know, uh, it's more like. The, 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 the situation in which I'm living now, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes uh, um, I have an idea of what I want to do. And sometimes, even though I have an idea of what I want to do, halfway in the picture, it changes, you know. So um, the size sometimes also dictates what I want to do. Sometimes I just go to the blank canvas and I don't even know what to paint. But the mere application of paint on the canvas and then seeing images and, and, and uh, uh, forms on the, on the canvas, you know, motivates me to, to create something which eventually becomes a subject matter. You know, I could just paint uh, uh, different colors on the, on the canvas and then maybe using the palette knife or the, or the brush, try and form certain images on uh, forms uh, on the canvas, you know. And at the end, maybe it comes out as a, a beautiful painting. So yes, sometimes the size may dictate to me what I want to paint. But I wish my studio was bigger. I would prefer to paint on larger canvases but as you can see so your problem is not a bit that you don't have a big car you you don't have a bigger studio all those things you know like not having a big van not having a, a book studio also dictates presently uh, the the sizes of canvases i'm using if i were to be painting maybe in a big warehouse it would be some maybe a little bit suicidal to be painting on miniature works even though that is not where you want to display your works but it will be more interesting to have larger works in the in the big warehouse or a, a place where the the, the the studio is is bigger because at the end of it all the vision is more appealing than having to squeeze your eyes to look at a, a miniature painting you know so i i sincerely believe that the it's more like uh, uh, the size of, of the place, environment in which you're working, and also the size of the canvases sometimes dictates what you want to do. Yeah. What do you think about Picasso? I love Picasso. I have a whole... That's for you then. <laughs> this is wonderful. <laughs> wow. Thank you very much. Because after I came and watched your work, I, I had a bunch of catalogs of different artists, but then I picked Picasso for you because I was able to, to associate to Yes, I saw, I, saw, I saw two different pictures, which I was able to see the eyes. Of Picasso. <laughs> yes, you see that? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm yeah, not saying it's yeah. one, but there's the, there's there's the, there's the, there's the, the, there's the linkage. Yeah, and, yeah. and then... <clears throat> I love Picasso. Yes. You see, yes. and I thought because it has a graphical aspect, but at the same time, um, so I thought, yeah, this one, for example, this is, uh, mm -hmm. you know. <clears throat> so, so I said I went through all the catalogs and I said this is for Lotto. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Ah, the do. famous. Yes. Mm. And with the bread on the table with his hands.
this this the hands are actually down yes, but yes, it's skated it's a red, it's a red. Uh, it's okay the person yeah. yeah, uh, yes, the guy the guy was a rascal <laughs> he he you could see the sort of person who loved life and wasn't afraid to take risks you know he could um, create happiness and create things with ordinary things and then you could see the Comical aspect of. Comical aspect, that's a good word. Yeah. All right. You know, say money no be problem. Honest on a block. All right, I'm back again. You know what time it is? Straight up. All right, what's up? Listen. I bank him and then I came and missy man. Me shall she been on the throne, so wind you know. I come off and I chill in the young mimbuna. And we send my reason I do your day, Juma. Oh pie boy, what did I do you put chima? What a tema, tema for hand, you wouldn't met him. Then my mepa my dear and if I pass to crapoma. And you send me the young home before be asuma. I shall win up what the young con qua just some pipe a few rice one gen no. But tema bobuano, mini bean tima mwa one no jama bakari. Hey, we live at a qua. As I see that the via one I'm over near my papa to via mosia nyamwa to fiaqua. I don't be up and sacred in your me. For example, you can look at this painting. I guess according to the atmosphere, mm -hmm. what you do mm -hmm. when the women are working. I, I like to adorn the women. In our society, I have an idea. I want me standing like this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.